Hey guys, so I wanted to show a particular build that I like on Junkrat, and I'm gonna just give you guys a little bit of a warning in advance. I did not play this build out the way that I recommend, and I am making slight adjustments in particular. I've been watching a lot of replays where I've been coaching people on Junkrat, and I've been recommending this talent, but after actually playing with this talent and, and doing a bunch of games with this one and this one, um, I, I'm starting to like this talent more, even if you're going endless. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later, but, uh, this talent is not as much value as I was expecting it would be. And even though a lot of competitive players are still running this talent, um, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. I personally like this one for extra zone control, even for not the final portion, but just having the grenades last an extra two seconds is surprisingly valuable. Now, the build that I am playing is, for me, I call it the Trap Hybrid build. Uh, primarily because I take a couple Trap Talents, and I love taking these Trap Talents, but I hybrid it with bonus damage so that you're still a the scary Junkrat we remember from the past, but now you have a bunch of utility that you're adding for the with the team. Now, in this particular game, it's not the best example of using the Traps. I do not use my Traps very well this game. Um, again, this was... Kind of rusty. I hadn't played Junkrat for a while. I've been doing um, some a little bit of competitive stuff with friends. I've been playing in particularly only uh, supports, so I've been a little rusty on damage, and I haven't done a lot of damage videos in a while. So I really wanted to show this build, but I actually love this build, um, and for a lot of different reasons. Now he still has the same problems that that many Junkrats have. His early game is rather weak. All your damage is poke damage. It's sustained damage. It's not very high compared to like a Rainer who's just going to do way more sustained damage. It's not going to be as high as a lot of other people. Um, but it is still really, really cool. Um, so right here, if you notice, I do put a trap. If I would have put it a little further up, there he would have been completely cut off from this direction. Uh, but I did wanted to see how close I could get to him before uh, he just started running off. But in this case, we should still be able to take this guy out. And that's all because of one trap that I landed. If not, he would have just gotten away. And that's also because of a flank that I did. So the early game of Junkrat, he's rather weak as far as damage goes, but he has decent utility. And I find that what you should be focusing on in the early portions of the game as Junkrat is landing good concussion mines. Sending weak people into your team. Don't send tanks into your team because they can usually get out and they might even kill you. Send weak people into your team whenever you can and try to you can flank with it if you want to you can deny one of my favorite trap locations is just put it right on their their wall so when they start walking into their wall they just immediately get sent back and they have to make a choice do i walk into the wall or do i just die while they just attack me uh so a lot of times like the only way to answer that is to have your tank take it for you or to have like have you just walk down the long way um which is that's why that's one of my favorite traps i don't know if i do it this game but um the as far as mines go the early portion of the game on junkrat should be abusing these mines level four i like taste for explosions i like getting that stacking um sorry we had a we had a conversation because of um a name earlier because his name is is based off of a play it's a long story um but we're we got grouped up with this guy. He was a great sport, um, but yeah, his, his name was based off of a play, so I don't want to sound really weird. Um, but yeah, use your mines to also save people. In, in cases where people are trying to body block, your mine is one of the best ways to answer that. I use it against the Nazebo traps a few times. In fact, just save that Anduin. Uh, who would have died without it? Um, so do get creative because the early game you're gonna have to do this your damage is super low i mean you can compare myself to like the enemy rainer rainer gets to focus his damage on one target so even though my damage is comparable to rainer rainer's damage is exactly on the target he wants it to be on every single fight my damage is random on whatever targets and it's super easy to heal up for someone like a Rhaegar or an anduin who can do aoe healing which is why i personally think that junkrat is very very weak in the early game he gets strong at level 10 when you get a great ult and he gets stronger at level 16 when you can endlessly throw out bombs and just do an overwhelming amount of damage but as far as dealing damage to the targets you want rainer is going to be a lot scarier than i will be however uh this build is all based around these traps so my goal is to give more utility than rainer does while also still being just an annoyance and possibly doing a decent chunk of damage. So in this case, we can see I am doing a decent amount of damage, but I'm really, it's not on the targets we need it to be on. If I was Raynor, Raynor would be dead. If I was Raynor, Diablo would have been dead. 
um, or Sylvanas or anything like that. Uh, but the cool part is, being Junkrat, I can stall from a really far range if I need to. So, for example, like if I decide, hey, you know what, they're over here, I can go and I can stall with something. Uh, I can toss a W out, and I can stall Diablo ones. I can use a Q, and I can stall for a while. Things that Raynor can't do. Um, also, that trap. I mean, we can root and stuff. I'm getting some more damage off on him just because I'm like, oh, my healer's almost here, so that's that's okay. And Rhaegar's almost out of mana. So if we can stall for just like one or two more times, we're going to be in a really good spot. In this case, I send out a W and I don't pop it. My reason for not popping it is because I want to just leave it there to interrupt and give me vision. And then now Rhaegar's back with mana. So this is just turning into one of those games. We've all played those games. You know what games I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're doing some good damage, but it's still, like, just less relevant damage. I always recommend, or I, I try to explain to people a lot of times, it's called impactful damage. Damage that goes exactly where it needs to be when you need it is impactful damage. Damage that's just healed up is unimpactful damage, unless it eventually overwhelms the enemies. Which, usually on objectives like this, it's possible to do so, but on other objectives, it's not. You can see I'm doing my auto attack and then Q, auto attack and then Q, so I'm not wasting any time. You can do camps very quickly. One other thing that if you notice that I did, um, I'll, I'll explain it on the next camp that I do actually. Because I do it on all the camps this game. Um, but I did position those camps so that all of my abilities would hit all of those minions without me needing to uh, do anything weird about it. So again right here, I attack and then I take a step back. And then it got... It got uh, messed up a little bit because Joanna was there. I'll show you guys. Uh, again, I do it in, in all the cams, so it'll be a lot easier in the next one. Another thing that I do, and this is very, very strong, drop your W down on the cam. What's going to happen is this knocks you back, but it doesn't knock away anyone on your team, and it also knocks back the enemies. So if the enemies try to fight for a camp, you knock all of them back, and then you get the camp, and they don't. Um so it is something that I try to do on, on all the camps as well. Even if I don't need it, it's a great force of habit to get in. Right here, I should die to this Rhaegar. I don't know if I do, though. He gets one more charge on me. Yeah, I do die there. I was pretty close to just popping that, um, but that's okay. As far as damage goes, again, like I'm doing a good amount of damage. It's just very random damage, right? However... Let's talk about the rest of this build. So, Sticky Wicket. I said that this talent was busted, and then people were like, this talent isn't as strong as you think it actually is. Um, and they were right. But I was also still pretty right. I overhyped this ability, and I even compared it to ultimate abilities. It's not at that level, but it is a very strong talent. Being able to silence people in a route essentially is just stunning them. Which is cool, because you have a stun that you can place wherever you want to. And this stun is is actually very, very strong. Um, and you can place it and do a lot with it. So, uh, for example, this guy is... Uh, it's not a stun because you can still auto-attack. So, like, Rainer still has value. But for the rest of them, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty strong. Um, but, yeah. Placing those traps gets really, really scary. I wish I had my, my W to interrupt that. Um, but, yeah. We do a lot of damage here. I... There's a lot of things I could be doing differently in this uh, in this situation, to be completely honest. I think I was just like, should I be trying to W one in my team or, or whatever, but that's okay. Now, when you hit level 10 is your first major power spike, in my opinion. Um, Sticky Wicket's okay, but for me, that's not a major power spike. It's just, it, it makes it to where you have a lot more utility, and you can fight over a lot more objectives. So that's why I like that. Um... This is where you really become, in my opinion, a real assassin, right? A real ranged assassin, because this gives you that impactful damage that you need. It's high burst damage. Okay, so I'm going to show you this camp. I, I shoot it, and then I back up. What's happening, and I've showed this a few times, but it's always important to show because people still don't do it. The range of these minions is this long. Oh, come on. The range of these minions is this long. So what's going to happen is that these minions are going to get up to where they're in range with me, and I stay in range of the first minion, so the two back minions just take a slight step forward, and now they're in range. Because you see my auto attack only hits one of them. It doesn't hit the other two. But watch what happens when I move away, and then I move back in. Now my auto attack hits all three of them. So I just tripled the speed that I do this camp by doing that one simple thing, I literally tripled the speed that I do this camp. 
And you can see how fast I'm doing AoE damage to these now. Super fast. I still have vision of this camp, so I know that they're not even approaching it. And the camp's about to spawn, and I'm grabbing this camp. So... I'm bringing a ton of utility to this game. Even though the enemies have more kills than us, they've got double our kills, I'm bringing so much utility to this game by just planning these camps out and setting up tra traps to where I can uh, lock it down. As far as stacks go, you never expect to actually finish this uh, quest, to be completely honest. like um, It's just there for just getting that extra little bit of damage. Which is okay. I like to combo it now with extra round timers because leaving those bombs on the ground allows you more zoning potential and it's a higher chance that you're going to get quest stacks. So I like extra round timers now um, more so than this trap talent personally. I think my old thought process was okay, well, if I hit someone with a, if I see someone who's about to walk into a sticky wicket, I could start shooting. My, um, grenades out and then right as they get hit by it they get hit by four grenades at 15 percent increased damage and then finally i was like wait a second four grenades at 15 percent increased damage is the same as 60 percent increased damage so why don't i just do 60 percent increased damage and i don't need to hit them with all four to get that 60 percent. i just need to hit them with the last one so i just found that this one's just way better um, but it's required a lot of testing and a lot of watching replays and everything to, to determine that. Um, so in there, I just stalled the camp a little bit. That's all I could really do because my team wasn't really there with me. I can't really blame them. Uh, my team got another death anyways, so it's going to be a little tricky. And I know a lot of these players. They're very good players. It's just we are also going against good players too. Um, so I am sharing that. Like These three right here are very solid players. I've played with them a lot. Um, in fact, these players are on a Heroic Division team. Um, actually, I believe they're in A this season, but they they literally stomped Division C, stomped Division B, stomped Division A, and got put into Heroic Division against all Grandmaster players when they weren't even Grandmaster players. Um, they're, they're really good, especially together. Um, but yeah, so very solid group of players. But that being said, we're still struggling at the beginning of this game. And so I'm using my Junkrat ability to stall this objective out. Now, if he was smart, he would hide right here. And I say if he was smart, this guy is also, he was a Grandmaster player. Um, but if you hide in this corner, it's a lot harder for Junkrat to interrupt because his bombs are going to hit this and bounce off, hit this and bounce off. So I need to get to the perfect angle to actually interrupt it. Um, but that's okay. Again, you can see my trap placements are pretty bad this game. Um, but yeah, I love... I love his ult because it's just guaranteed damage on where you want it to be. So I do it, use it on Diablo, knock him closer to my team, and then put him in a position where we can get a kill. Unfortunately, great Ancestral on their side, um, but it's, it is going to be really rough for us. Um, I can just toss a W out and interrupt him. I tried to toss my E, but it wasn't long enough range. So again, we just go back to stalling. We stalled this objective for a good amount of time already. We, we burned a lot of their ults, so so far so good. We're doing really well, or really good. Um, got a, a decent amount of damage going out. I mean, overall, we're, we're playing this really well. But again, my damage is still chaos damage, right? Um, so I, I dropped a trap down, and I tried to time it well enough to where his unstoppable would end, and then he would get hit by my trap. Now that he's hit by my trap, he's going to be taking increased damage. As well as he's uh, he's he's rooted and silenced, um, so he can't do anything. And now we have control over the point, and we'll be able to take it. So the ability of Junkrat to stall, and now at level thirteen, I get the double traps. I like double traps. I just don't use it that well this game. And I know I, you guys are hearing this a million times. You're like, why didn't you show a different game? Because I just liked this particular game to show how long you can stall. And I liked this game because we were losing in the beginning. Um, we were losing as far as kills go, but keeping us in the game using macro, using double soaking, getting camps, getting all of that other stuff, uh, showed how you can take a losing game and still kind of push it forward. Even though, yes, I haven't played the traps out as well as you could. But still, and again, same thing. Now, I repositioned this one, and he jumped in a little early, but... Thankfully, the uh, the Joanna helped out. These are the fights you love as Junkrat. One, because you can knock the enemies off the point with your W, so you automatically win a contested point. Hence, we automatically win a contested point. But secondly, 
with the traps that you're placing, we just rooted and silenced the Rainer. So now we have a beneficial fight. They're all clustered, which means that I'm getting AoE damage with my Qs and just stacking for free. So we're doing a huge amount of damage there. We love clustered fights as Junkrat. It's, it's honestly your best type of fights. We're going to get this guy low and then immediately ult. And then immediately pop the ult. Again, that's your impactful damage. That is the damage that's instantly um, a huge burst and instantly goes on the target you want it to go on. Once again, I back up. I position them to where they're closer to each other. Uh, this time I actually mess it up just by a little bit. I think I might have been a little... Uh, a little nervous because we were stealing their camp and they still had three people alive. But uh, but yeah, so you can see this one's taking essentially twice as long because I didn't get that uh, I didn't pull them together as fast. So yeah, as far as level sixteen goes, I go endless nades. Now with testing, I thought that burst fire would be bad because you never get that fourth shot off. But because we're not taking cannonball anymore after they buffed extra oomph. Um, I actually personally still like going in this nades because you usually still get to fire all four shots off before your cooldowns get lowered. So then you, once they get hit by all of them, then your cooldowns are back and you can fire all four off again. So it does work and it works really, really well. So I do like that extra round plus endless nades. You can still go cannonball if the enemies have like a healer like a Rexar, uh, where you just can poke them out. But for the most part, I love going uh, extra oomph because your cooldown of your ult is just so low. So right there, I've placed two. I've placed three traps now. I've placed two of the silence traps and one of the knockback traps. This is a pretty straightforward uh, win of the objective, and that's a quick five points of damage that we can get. We can go back and defend if we want to, or we can try to push a different lane if we want to. It's all however we want to play it out. So you have really, really good zone control. You're really strong at, at holding down objectives wherever you want to go in this build. And you still have amazing poke damage and that possibility of doing burst. So that's why I love this build. Once you hit 16, it feels like you just dominate. It feels like the enemies can't do anything about it. Um, so right here, again, that's so why I, I just trap the, uh, trap the Diablo and then... Just hit a couple things. I don't want him to charge me and just kill me. Um, but at the same time, he has breath and his breath's already used. So it's all right. Um, but yeah, I accidentally killed a Rainer just as he's trying to run away. And I'm just getting low cooldowns. You see how fast I'm firing these off? And look, boom, back off cooldown again. Fire off more. And those ones didn't end up hitting too many things. And then right here, boom, send in ult. Push the uh, Nazebo into our team. Throw in some grenades. Don't get a kill. But... Still really solid. And this Grey Mane's doing the damage on the targets that we really need it on. So that's why when I recommend people playing Junkrat, make sure that you're drafting him with something like a Rainer, a Grey Mane, a Sylvanas. Something that can do damage to the targets you want. So you can do all the chaos damage while they do all the, the guaranteed damage on the targets that need to take damage. Like, I'm doing a lot of damage, but but remember what I said. Like, Grey Mane's damage is exactly where he wants it to be, while my damage is more chaos damage. Um, so he also leads to more kills. Overall, this game, he's probably done more as far as team fights go, as far as impactful damage. But I also have done more camps, and I've done um, more control over a lot of these other things as well. So there's pros and cons to who you're playing. That's why I recommend having both. Make sure you have a guaranteed damage dealer of who you want. I actually make a big mistake in this part. I was trying to just zone them out, and then I just got myself real caught by that Diablo. Um, and I got slow. That was a big slow from Tass. So they played that really well, and I also played that really poorly. Um, in this case, because of my mistake, we have to only just take a trade. So we'll fast forward. Uh, and now my team's just dominating. We've got that couple, like three level lead, and we kind of just can do whatever we want to. We're controlling everything, and... As far as experience contributed, though, Zul should still have us beat. And there we go. Again, I bring them together, and I'm doing just full crit damage. Cutting the time of uh, taking this camp down to a third. So I've gotten a huge amount of macro this game. 
Cannonball, if you're going against someone like a Rhaegar as their healer who you could just overwhelm. Or you go extra oomph if you're going against someone like a Lucio who is going to like be constantly healing all your poke damage. Then you go loose, you go extra oomph so you can do burst damage. And you can get the cooldown of this really, really low. So the cooldown is 75 seconds. So you only need to hit three people to have no cooldown. And it, it happens surprisingly often. So right here, I just wanted to stall Diablo, and he wanted to stall me, but honestly, like, if I could just stall him for a while, it'd be pretty fun for me. So in this case, I just start putting traps around, and I just start poking him. He'll charge me. He'll be... Honestly, he's really scary. He does a lot of damage. But I, I'm just going to keep hitting him. And you can even hold that out longer, because someone like a Diablo is not going to be able to kill that. Um, so feel free to, like, hold that out for even longer. And there we go. And that's game. So as far as talents that I would shift, just level one, I would go to the extra round timers. And the rest of this build is the same for me. Um, I just tend to go extra oomph more against uh, uh, sustained healers. And I go at cannonballs against more burst healers. And that's about it. I mean, this is Junkrat. This is the... My, honestly my favorite build right now is the hybrid trap build you still get the damage elements of your q build but you also get these like heavy zone control traps and guys get creative with them i was not very creative with them this game we didn't really need them that much but i also wasn't that creative with them junkrat still has amazing capabilities for um macro for wave clear for whatever else you need so use it he is weak early game you can ask anyone he is very weak as far as damage goes so utilize your w to get picks in the early game and as you start approaching level 16 that's when your character really turns on and that's when you can be really scary so uh, i recommend playing Junkrat, trying this build out, and seeing how you guys like it. I really like it. I've been doing really well with it lately. Um, but bear in mind, I did want to show a game where we started off losing, and then we turned it around afterwards. And that was exactly this game. Um, and again, this was a, a ranked game with Diamond and Masters players, so keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to check out any of my other games. Videos. Games? I don't know. Check out my other stuff.